Hello everyone, welcome back to The Budget Sportsman. Thank you so much for joining me on today's video. Today, I'm gonna be giving you my thoughts and my review on the Latitude Classic 2 saddle. Before I get into the review, I wanna give a big shout out to Latitude. I reached out to them and asked if they'd be interested in sending me this saddle for review, and they did so at my request. I noticed that the Method and the Method 2 have gotten a lot of attention, but the Classic hasn't gotten a whole lot of attention. So it was a saddle that I was really interested in reviewing. Now, not only did they send me the saddle for review, but they're also offering up a second saddle, a Classic 2, that's gonna be given away as part of my 10,000 subscriber giveaway. So if you're interested in winning one of these Classic 2 saddles, go ahead and go to the link in the description. It's the budgetsportsman.com slash giveaway, and you can go over there to be entered to win this saddle, as well as some other cool prizes. So go ahead and make sure you do that. But with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the review. All right, so here's your first look at the Latitude Classic 2 saddle. Now this does come in at $219, and if you're interested in the weight, on my scales it comes in at 25 ounces. Now the first thing that I noticed when I took this out of the box was what I would call sort of a rugged quality to it. I was really impressed with just the feel and the materials and the workmanship on this saddle. Now this is not intended to be a comparison video to any other saddle. However, last year I hunted entirely out of the Phantom, and that's what I have the most experience with. That's what I'm really comfortable with what I spent a lot of time in. And so there are gonna be some things that I'm gonna point out, sort of the comparison between this and the Phantom. And one is, while the Phantom is a quality saddle, it's very flexible. It's very, uh, you know, just sort of soft and you can ball it up very easily. This has a different feel to it. This has a stiffer, uh, more rugged feel to it. It is still mesh here, of course, but it's a very, uh, I don't know what I would call it, very uh, sort of a coarse texture to the mesh. And you're also gonna notice that because of these two support panels here, which we'll mention more later when we get into the tree. These are to provide support, but you're gonna notice it doesn't just collapse really easily. So this, as far as balling it up, um, it's gonna roll really easily in this direction like this, and you can really roll it up like that, but it's not gonna roll as easily in this direction because you've got this really stiff webbing right here. That's not necessarily a negative by any means. It just has, a, again, just sort of this rugged, well-built, uh, saddle feel to it. This this just feels like this is going to last you a lifetime of hunting. So let's go ahead and put it on and let me show you some of the features and some of the things that I think are kind of cool. All right, now there is one more thing I wanted to mention before I actually put on the saddle and that is that the leg straps on the Classic 2 are detachable. They have this G-hook and you can just pull them right off. Now you can actually probably see here that this G-hook actually has a gate on it. So it's really cool. There's no possibility that you are going to lose this hook when it's hooked up. But if you're the kind of person who doesn't like to walk in with your leg straps hooked up, or maybe you're just the kind of person who doesn't like to use leg straps at all, well, you don't have to cut them off and reduce the resale value of your saddle. All you have to do is pull them off and throw them in a drawer. Or if you want to hike in without them and then pull them out of your pocket and clip them on before you climb the tree, that's also a possibility. Personally, I've been hiking around with this and I've been hiking with them on. It's not been an issue for me, but again, everybody's different. I think it's really, really cool feature that uh, Latitude included here. Again, it's really easy to do. You just open that up and slide that right in there and now you've got your leg straps ready to roll. All right, now to put this saddle on, it's gonna be just like almost every other saddle on the market. Basically, you're gonna have these two ropes. One is your bridge, one is your waist belt. You just step through both of them and pull the saddle up. Now you're gonna see this rope here is your actual waist belt. It, the Latitude Classic has a metal-free waist belt and it's really an interesting design. It uses a sterling Optlux and you're gonna grab the red end and hold onto that with one hand and grab the rest of the knot and slide that down with the other hand. The red is always your tag end. It cinches down quite nicely. Now reach under, grab your G hooks, which again have the same gate on them so there's no possible way they're ever going to come open and snap them into the other loops here for your leg loops just like a lot of other saddles on the market and i've got the saddle on ready to go let me talk to you about this waist belt all right now i have to admit when i first saw the metal free belt on this classic two saddle i was a little bit skeptical it is kind of a big knot right here and it just didn't really make a lot of sense to me how this was going to be better than a buckle However, I've used the saddle a bit, especially going out hanging trail cameras and so forth, and I've actually found that it is really good. First of all, Latitude talks about the fact that this uh, belt doesn't make any noise because it has no metal in it. And that's definitely true. You don't have anything clinking or clanking around. 
I've had some belt buckles on saddles where even if they were clipped, they still rattled a little bit. There's nothing like that with this at all. But the other thing that Latitude talks about is the fact that this will actually stay secure and that buckle will not slip. And I can attest to the fact that I've walked some pretty significant distances out on the public land to set trail cameras wearing this, and I really have not had an issue with it moving at all. And one of the things I really like about the belt is that it is free floating. So you can move it from side to side. You're not stuck with this uh, not being right in the middle. So I can actually slide it all the way to the side and take my tag end and kind of maybe stick it out through there. And it's totally out of the way and it's actually surprisingly comfortable. You would think that maybe the rope wouldn't be as comfortable as a flat belt, but it is actually surprisingly comfortable and I've actually been really, really impressed with it. It's very easy to do and undo. I can just pull it out easily. I can pull it up easily, but it stays where you put it very nice and secure. All right, now that we're up in the tree, I wanted to address a few of the other features. First of all, let's talk about the lineman's loops here. The lineman loops, I think, are fantastic. They're quite large, they're very stiff, and you're not gonna have any trouble at all finding them in the dark. Now, I hate small, floppy lineman's loops that are gonna be hard to find when I'm trying to come down the tree or go up the tree or whatever it is, especially in the dark. You're not gonna have that problem with these lineman's loops. Nice and large, nice and stiff. There are a couple things that I wanna point out, however, and that is that they sit horizontal to the ground and they are connected only to the top strap of the saddle again this is an area where if i compare it to what i'm used to with the phantom the phantom actually sits uh, vertically and they connect from the bottom strap to the top strap so they're very similar they lay basically together with your bridge loops is that a good thing or a bad thing eh, i don't know it's just different one of the things that i notice about the phantom is that you get a little bit more even pull when you're climbing with your lineman's belt on because you're still getting that pull from the top to the bottom. Whereas this, you get a little bit more singular pull across the top strap. It's not a safety issue. It's not even really a comfort issue. It's just something to be aware of. Now, one thing that I do think is a little bit of a negative about this particular design is that it takes up a lot of real estate here on this top strap. And what I mean by that is your molly loops now are starting right here, right where my thumb is, is the first molly loop. It's something to be aware of that if this is the front of my pouch, the back of my pouch is actually gonna be sitting back here, almost behind my hip. And I think that on the Phantom and maybe some other models, you are able to get the saddle bag or your, drop, your dump pouch, whatever you wanna call it, a little bit farther forward. This is not an issue with just the Classic. There are a lot of other saddles out there that have the same exact design. So it's just, again, something to be aware of that if you're gonna run those kind of uh, dump pouches, you are gonna probably be reaching just a little bit further behind and not quite right on your hip. The bridge on this saddle is excellent. It's what you would expect. It is a nice Amsteel bridge. It is adjustable, very similar to a lot of other uh, bridges on the market. Has a Prusik on just on the right side only, and you're able to adjust your length with that. Now, one thing I wanna mention about the Latitude Classic 2 that I really appreciate are these bridge loops. Now, when you look at them and you feel them, you can tell that they're very stiff and there's, there's something inside. Now, I'm not gonna to pretend to know what Latitude actually did here, but I'm gonna take a wild stab in the dark and say they actually sewed a piece of rope inside this bridge loop. Now, why does that matter? Well, most saddles on the market today have some kind of an adjustment system to adjust from the top to the bottom, getting the pressure from the bottom strap to the top, depending on your comfort and your particular style. Now, um, what I have found in the past is that this style, which is a Prusik on the bridge loop, has been incredibly difficult for me personally to adjust in the stand, when I'm up on my platform, when I'm doing it one-handed. But what I found with this is because it has that rope in the inside and because it has that stiffness, let me just try to break it a little bit there, I'm actually able to move this one-handed pretty easily. Now, it's not gonna be super easy. There we go, I finally got it to move. There we go. And once I got it really moving, I got it all the way at the bottom. And once I put it at the bottom, it stays there. It locks in, it grabs, and you can see I've got all of this extra flapping around up there. And then I can take it off, I can take my weight off, can try to get that loose a little bit again. And even one-handed, which is always the chore of this, right? Trying to do it one-handed. I can put it all the way from the bottom, all the way to the top, and boom, it locks in. As soon as I put my weight in it, it does not move. So you have the full adjustment, top to bottom. And the cool thing is the comfort channels on the Phantom pop out sometimes, or when you shift around, they move. 
this stays exactly where you put it. And again, because of that rigidity inside of there, it's one of the easiest systems that I've tried of this style. I tried the H2 saddle last year and I just could not adjust it one-handed in the tree. So big kudos to Latitude for getting this one right. All right, so let me try to wrap up this video by talking about the comfort of the Classic 2 saddle. Now, I'm almost hesitant to even talk about comfort anymore in a saddle review because I've just realized that almost every saddle on the market is amazing and it's just really a matter of finding one that really works for you. It's a matter of finding one that fits for your body style and shape and size and weight as well as whether or not you're a sitter or a leaner. The truth is, I don't think we give enough credit to the fact that some saddles are better for sitters and some are probably better for leaners. Now, one of the reasons I say that is because for me, when I lean, I'm like a plank and I don't have a whole lot of backside to fill out any cup of a saddle. And this has been my experience with quite a few saddles. For instance, even the, the, cru the cruiser saddle that everybody loves, when I tried that saddle, I had this same feeling that it was just too much cup for my body. So that's a little bit of how I feel with the Classic 2 saddle. As a leaner, I don't feel like a lot of the pressure is on my backside. I feel like it's on the straps, at the base of my legs, and at my hips. Now, again, you can adjust that. You can play with the, not comfort channels, but the adjustability of the bridge here and the bridge loops. And certainly, I've been up here in the tree for quite a while filming, and I certainly would not say I'm uncomfortable but I do get pressure in my straps more than what maybe I would care for. Again, as another data point of reference, however, I let my brother-in-law sit in this saddle. It was his first time ever in a saddle and he had no problems getting comfortable absolutely instantly. And so, again, it's a very personal thing. I do not think that the Classic 2 is inherently uncomfortable at all. I do find that for myself, I get a lot of pressure on the straps and that's just one data point. If you like everything else about the Classic 2 saddle, then absolutely, by all means, I think you should give it a try and see how it feels for you and your body. Well, guys, there it is. That's my review of the Latitude Classic 2 saddle. Again, if you're interested in winning one of these saddles, go ahead and go to the link in the description and go ahead and get signed up to be entered into the giveaway, which you're gonna be doing later this year once we reach 10,000 subscribers. Again, the more you share this video, the more that you share the giveaway, the quicker we'll get there and the quicker we'll give away that saddle. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think down in the comments, what your thoughts are about the Classic 2 Saddle as well as this video. Until next time, remember to get off YouTube and get outdoors into God's great creation.